Hallelujah. It's all about faith. When we examine our daily life, we will find out how much faith we have. Examine your life, your daily life. You will be able to find out how much faith you have. So if somebody says, I'm a Christian, I just laugh. I'm a Christian, I'm a man. I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I'm this. But examine your daily lives. You will find out how much faith you have. Empty profession of faith will not help us at all. Empty one. This is life we live today. Professional faith, empty. I'm a Christian, whereas you are not. What can we show? I'm a Christian. This is empty professional faith. Faith is manifested in the small thing in our daily life. Me, faith, <laughs> by faith, oh, by faith, e, by faith, by faith. Because we have no other life as a Christian. Faith, 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 faith. You only apply faith when you need healing. That's the kind of Christian you are. You apply faith when you are in need of something from God. God help me, God help me, I have faith. If you want to sit down, you need faith to sit down. To stand up by faith. To say amen by faith. To greet by faith. Faith is manifested in the small thing in our daily lives. Until you know how much you need God. Until you know how much you need God. To you, you don't need God to sit down. This is a big mistake. You don't know how much you need God. You claim you're a Christian. How many of you actually sit in the name of Jesus, by the help of Jesus, and you want to stand up and say, thank you, Jesus? No, you don't need God for those things. You believe you can do them. Tell your neighbor until you begin to know how much you need God. I can hear you. Do you know you need God to dress up, even to make up, to comb your hair? You need God. But how many of you know this? Do you know you need God to even greet? How are you, sir? You need God to treat us. See me, I need God to turn around. I need God. I just need God to pick something on the ground. But how many of you know this? And you say you are serving God. You say you are serving God. Satan lash at you in the area you believe you don't need God. That is where a Satan attack you. Satan always attack you where you believe you don't need God. When you want to sit down, Satan attack you because he knows you will not call God to help you to sit. And when God is not involved, your strength is zero. Tell your neighbor, Satan attack where we believe we don't need God. How are you? You believe you don't need God to say that. Satan come in. He always monitor your life to study and to know the area you are not involved God. That is the area he come in to attack. You want to pray. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to pray. Wait for me, I'm going to pray. While you are going, you don't need God. Until you get to where you want to pray before you need God. But Satan strike before you get there. Until you know how much you need God, then you serve God. You don't know how much you need God. You don't need God for small things. You need God for big things. You need God when the doctor is telling you that, uh, oh, go and uh, write your will. 
we cannot longer treat you. Just be eating and leave. But this case, nothing we can do. Then you run to God. But so far, doctor will tell you they can handle your case. You don't need God. You always come into God with case that all hope has lost. Then you involve God. You don't need God. Until you know how much you need God, then you begin to live a wonderful life, a life of contentment. Then you discover yourself, what God says you can do, what God says you are, and what God says you can achieve. Do you know you need God to see me, to look at me? But you are just looking at me without involve God. <laughs> By God. You are looking at me without even involve God. Because you don't need God to look at me until you're blind. When you are blind, you say, God, open my eyes to see this man. Are you with me? See, you are looking at me. You are not involved God to see me. Because you believe you don't need God to see me. But when you are blind, you involve God to open your eyes to see me. Tell your neighbor until you know how much you need God. Not my, not my job. Not my, not my the short. be seated. Before you can come here today, the thing is above your strength. You realize that, ha, ah, I need to go to synagogue. You were handling it yourself. You think, hey, I, this thing can be handled by you. Oh, no, no, no problem. But it's above you. That is, you quickly have to run here. You are welcome until you know how much you need God. I know how much I need God. That is why I pray all the time, 24 seven. I'm always in an attitude of prayer. See, see me, see me. I'm calling God to help me to turn. See, see. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to God to help me to turn. And I turn, I say, thank you, Jesus. To move my leg, I need God to move it. Oh, God, thank you. So this is why I pray all the time. Because you don't know how much you need God. That is why you have time and when and how to pray. Because big situation happen occasionally. But small situation, little situation all the time. See me? Because I have not called God to involve. I can't move. OK, now. God, thank you. I'm moving. See, at the same time, I'm talking, thank you for your strength. Allow me, give me strength to talk. I'm turning again. Thank you, Lord. Give me the strength to turn. If I want to sleep, I'll do that. If I, all the time, I pray all the time. Because I need him in all I do. I know how much I need him. Everything I do, I need him to evolve. Then there's no time to break. Your problem is you don't know how much you need God. Those areas you believe you don't need God is area Satan used to enter. That's avenue for Satan, root for Satan, those areas you don't need God. 
you create avenue and opportunity for Satan to enter you. And by the time you now need God, Satan has entered already. He has used the small things you believe you can do yourself, and the rest, you don't have any strength. Those things you believe you can do yourself, it's not you. You don't have strength to do anything. Tell your neighbor how much you need God. You need to know how much you need God. I can hear you. Again and again. Stand up now. If you know, are you calling God to stand up? That is the problem. Where did you get the strength to stand up? But why are you not involved in him? It means you are using your own strength to stand up. I can see reason why you have spinal cord injury. Let us stand up. Sit down. You see? Are you involved, God? For the first time. When you begin to recognize it and know you need God in the small thing, faith is manifested in the small thing in our daily life. If you want to overcome and become victorious in this world, you must know how much you need God. Can you greet your colleague? Give a handshake to your colleague. Give a handshake. Are you involved, God? You can do that yourself? You are involving God. Okay, smile. Are you involved, God, to smile? <laughs> Take this from me. It shall be well with you. Yeah. Because Satan is a very crafty person, trickish, tactic. You have to involve God. Those areas you fail to involve God are areas Satan are using. You don't need to say, hey, I must pray before I sleep. When you have been praying already, sitting on the bed, you have to involve God. Lying and stretch your head on the pillow, you involve God. And when you are now later lying down, you begin to meditate and meditate and meditate before you finally sleep. You are praying, not until you went to somewhere and begin to pray before you stand up and now, no, 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 no. Then, there is no way for Satan. Those areas you find difficult to penetrate in your career, those areas you find difficult to penetrate in your business, and those areas you have been finding difficult to penetrate in your head, even in your marriage, The one who washes over you never walk. Never sleep. Why are you sleeping? If you don't pray, you are sleeping. He's watching over you 24 7. You have to call him 24 7. You have to involve him 24 7. As you are looking at me, are you involving God? Eh? Something is going on in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Just only thank you, Jesus, is enough. It's just enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, as you are looking at me. Me, you are involving him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I don't understand what this man is saying. Please, give me understanding. Give me understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank you, Jesus. You want to sit down. Thank you, Jesus. You stand up. Thank you, Jesus. You want to dance. Thank you, Jesus. You can start from thanking Jesus. And when you hear your thanks, you open relationship for you. We will give you a word to say. Thank you, Jesus. Look at me. I'm moving. Just see me. You cannot see my lips moving. But I'm saying something. What I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But you will never see me because I'm not involved my flesh and my body. I never involved them to say that. So therefore, it's possible for me now to do other things on the outside. It is when I involve, I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you are now calling me. I will not be able to answer you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If I want to answer you, I need to stop. Thank you, Jesus. I say, hey, what are you saying? 
because I'm involving my flesh. Because we are fighting spirit being. If our weapon of warfare are carnal, I will need to give you a gun and cutlass. If our weapon of warfare are carnal, I will need to give you gun here to hold gun and cutlass. But our weapon of warfare is not carnal because we are fighting spirit being. Like I'm moving now, I'm giving and I'm receiving. If I'm only giving and I'm not receiving, I will be dry. Okay, see me. <laughs> yes, I'm giving you, but I must receive. To receive, my heart must involve with God. Why I'm giving, I receive. I give, I feel. But you give, but you are not received. Faith is a believer heart. Tell your neighbor. Again. It's a believer's heart. That is faith. Someone will ask you, what is faith? You say, faith is a believer heart. You say, faith is expecting God to do what he's expected to do. Mm, that is definition. Simple. Faith is a believer's heart. And when you live by faith, walk by faith, talk by faith, you can be going and listen to me. I'm talking to God. I'm talking to God if I want to talk to him. say, how are you? But at the same time, I'm talking to God because my heart is faith. If I want to talk to you, does not mean I should stop talking to God. I can be talking to God and at the same time talking to you. Yes, because it's my heart. No. I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. That is why you can have any form of face. Oblong face, round face, tall, fat, yellow, red, green, color. But in our heart, we are like Jesus. A believer heart is it. In my heart, my heart
Christianity lies in our heart. Christianity lies in our heart. Begin to think about yourself. Many of us are worship God we do not know. You never hear from me before. He never talked to you. He never act with you. You never act with him. You talk and act with him by imagination. Don't forget, while you are sitting down, say, thank you, Jesus, in your heart. And begin to fire on as you are looking at me, because as I'm looking at you, I'm fire. What I'm saying is what I receive. But I should also receive from him as I'm giving you. So to receive from him as I give you, my spirit man should also continue to fire on. Begin to talk, talk, talk. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I need more. I need more to give you. I need more to give them. I need more to give them. As I give you, give, receive, receive. My spirit man will be received from Jesus, and I give him it all so that I will not be empty. You may be seated. Thank you. Are you depending on Jesus to see it? What are you saying? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He loves him when you recognize him. When you know it's your law and you put him where he belongs, it's not one of those things, it's only. It's not one of those things. You make your plan at the end of the day, you say, oh, okay, I want to go to church and I have to come back by 12 and go to the meeting. You are making him one of those things. It's only, when you make a plan only, not miss plan, it's not a tenant, it's landlord. So the challenge we have today is our upbringing. Upbringing is still there. We have not disconnected from upbringing in time of our spiritual life. Upbringing. Christianity by conventiousness. Upbringing. You have not yet what God says you are. You are like someone. You look like somebody. Your achievement is like somebody. You talk like somebody. Your behavior is like somebody. Your achievement can be compared with, oh, no, this is how he behave. That is why when you are not around, they don't miss you because people that can do what you are doing are many around. And you should be unique. You are sent to make a difference. You are pursuing what others have pursued. What others have achieved is what you want to achieve. You are not unique in any way. If there's any unique in your life, let me know. Oh, maybe your hair, you have a blonde hair. Or oh, you look tall, you are beautiful. Or oh, you are very rich. There's no one that as rich as you are. Or uh, you have eloquent speech. No, that's, you are not unique in any way. You are just like others. And why? This is where the world is staggered. There is no difference in the world for the past many years now. Since I was born, I can't say any different in the world. The world is still the same, the same, the same, the same. Scientists cannot have a breakthrough again. There's trouble in the world. Economy no different, no breakthrough in economy, no breakthrough in scientists, no breakthrough in any, any area. And when we don't have breakthrough, we continue to go around like a cycle of life. What we have used is what we keep using. The idea we have applied in the past is the same idea we are applying. The same idea. In those days, we talk of 50 years in the past. There's discovering, different discovering, different discovering, different area of life. But there's nothing like that again. Where are we going? When you go to the airport, you learn that there's no aircraft again. The little aircraft we have all over the world are damaged. There's no new one. The one they discovered five years ago, I mean, they stop it because it caused crisis and accident to the world. The solar energy you are talking about seems not too reliable. 
it's not yet confirmed to the world that the world can rely on that. There's crisis in the world. No more discovery. We keep using old idea, recycling, 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 recycling. Where are we going? I will give you just a second or two minutes to think about your life. Are you from Europe? Are you from Asia? Are you from, where are you from? Are you from Africa continent? Okay, sit down and think if there's any discovery in the world, in your area. We are running out of idea. The war is running out, out of war, idea. idea. Because we fail to carry God along. We fail to know how much we need God. You need to know how much you need God. You need God to bath. You need God to make up. You need God to rub cream. You need God to look at mirror. The moment you know how much you need God, you are with God 24-7. A break in God is a relationship with Satan. Just a break with God is a relationship with Satan because there is no vacuum, no neutral wall, no neutral. It's either you are dark or you are light. When you are out of light, you are in darkness. You may not confess Satan, but your faith is not practical. Faith must be practical. You must exercise your faith to show you believe. Because the belief in our heart is released by faith. If I say I believe, to show I believe, my faith must be practiced. If I believe, where is my faith then? I believe Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Lord and Savior. Okay? You believe Jesus is your Savior and the Lord. Where is your faith? And faith is practical. There is no abstract faith. Must be practiced. And you have faith that is not practical. Definitely you have no faith. I believe. Where is your faith? The belief in our heart can only be released by faith. So, the question now. Are you a Christian? Yes. Me? You believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay. Show me your Savior. By faith.